Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, as we are here for your basically weekly uh, K-State football recruiting update. That's uh, kind of what it's turned into, and this is a, a good time of year for that to happen because there is seemingly news every other day with what K-State's doing in the recruiting space from guys taking visits or scheduling official visits or anything and everything in between uh, what takes place on campus and off campus. And there's always a lot of you know interest and anticipation with some of the high-end guys. So let's just kick it off immediately and start there, Drew, uh, because I think people are going to ask about it until he's you know signed a, a letter of intent somewhere. Uh, Lincoln Cure, what is the latest on uh, the, the recruit from Goodland? So still feel good about where K-State sits. I mean, K-State's been pretty solidly in the lead since they offered. Uh, the, the big news is obviously that he will be on campus in April, and then he already has an official visit scheduled to K-State, so he'll be on campus again June 21st. Uh, the other school to watch out for is still Oregon, where he'll be taking an official visit. I think it's uh, the week before, so it's June 14th. But it's really those two and then everybody else. But, I mean, if you want to be completely honest here, it's like K-State and then a couple notches below, and then it's Oregon. So I, I still like where K-State sits. I, I think that the, the visit next month, you'll kind of see – like, I don't know if a commitment is imminent on that visit, but I think that you'll just kind of see more of, okay, like, this is really happening after this next visit. All right, well, things that might be more imminent, or at least you start to look around and you kind of see how the, the pieces are going to fall into place. Offensive lineman Anthony Ogamoro, uh, what's, what's the news on him now? Because – uh, this is another guy out of the state of Oklahoma that K-State seems to be hot on the trails of, and there are some you know pieces that you can kind of start to connect to each other that makes you think K-State is heading towards a good position here. Yeah, it's it's really one where, like you said, like you can really see kind of the the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit for K-State. He, he announces his commitment date of May 21st, I believe it was on Monday, when he posted that and then uh yesterday uh on tuesday he ends up posting that he'll be taking an official visit to k-state i believe it's may 10th through the 12th so you start to puzzle that together and you start to think hmm is that going to be his final visit so you you like where k-state sits for him especially because you have to remember uh we did the full kind of update on him after his last visit, which was uh, March 9th, and he's immediately coming back to K-State for an official visit. So you, you like where K-State sits because of that. And, and you kind of see, again, Connor Riley and now Matt Wells with his ties in Oklahoma kind of flexing their muscles of, like, we can go into Oklahoma and get offensive linemen. We can go to Oklahoma and get pretty much anybody that we want. And K-State's kind of gone away from Oklahoma for a little bit, so it's fun to see them kind of tap in or tap back into Oklahoma because there's a lot of talent in the state of Oklahoma. Yeah, no no doubt about it. And we're seeing K-State try and find them. They, you know, they have some Oklahoma guys on the roster, Jake Clifton being one of them. So we'll see how it works out here. Uh, shifting the focus to another state just to the south of, of Kansas, uh, Montario Elston is a guy that uh, has probably been on the radar of a lot of K-State fans for a while now, running back out of Arkansas. What's the latest on him? So the latest with Montero also is that uh, he's also taking an official visit that June 21st weekend, which appears to be a very loaded crop for K-State. And, and honestly, with Elston, no news is good news because no news means that K-State is still very far ahead in the lead. I know that he wants to kind of enjoy the process a little bit kind of like Lincoln Cure in a way where he still wants to take other visits, but K-State has been in the lead for a, a really long time and is still in the lead. Uh, the, the interesting thing for me would be, does he make it to campus in the spring? But I, I like where K-State sits in. Uh, Monterey Alston is also along the same lines of Davon Rice and Dylan Edwards a bit, where he's a smaller back in stature, but is very, very quick. 
So he he's somebody that I, I think K-State fans would be really excited about if K-State were to end up sealing the deal. Uh, there was also some notes. People were, were talking about this and, and kind of recognizing that K-State seems to be a lot more active uh, in the running back space right yeah. now. So what other running backs are out there that K-State is uh, starting to be more heavily involved in? Uh, DJ Duggar is the big one from Texas. He also has an official visit, ironically, the, the same weekend of Ontario Elston. Uh, I believe it's uh, Demarius Robinson, uh, from, also from Oklahoma. Uh, he will be taking an unofficial visit to K-State this weekend. So you kind of get the vibe that two running backs isn't out of the mix uh, for K-State this cycle. They took two running backs last cycle. The thing that really makes you wonder is, is K-State kind of preparing for life without DJ Giddens? Because that, that's kind of the vibe that you get if they're going to take two running backs is that it probably means that DJ Giddens is somebody that they expect to go to the NFL. But, I mean, that, that's all more speculation and kind of piecing the dots together from me than me being like, oh, DJ Giddens isn't coming back after this season. But it, it seems like that's something that K State is very cogniz- cognizant of and just very prepared for at this stage. Yeah, and it, it makes sense. DJ Giddens obviously has proven himself over the last year now, and uh, will I mean probably project to to be even better in a lot of people's eyes this season with another year of experience. So, uh, like the the possibility of him going to the NFL is there's a legit chance that that happens after this coming season and that that's an opportunity that he should explore because we know what the lifespan of running backs in the NFL is like so we'll see how that plays out moving things closer to home for K-State McGuire Richmond is a name that uh that you mentioned last night what's the news on the linebacker from Blue Valley uh he is a name to know like uh, it's I don't want to say that he could be the next commitment because I've been pounding the table that Weston Polk could be the next commitment. <laughs> but if there's somebody that's going to beat Weston Polk, I think that it might be McGuire Richmond from Blue Valley. Uh, his brother is actually an offensive lineman or uh, is, a, is an offensive lineman at Iowa uh, that K-State was pretty familiar with. So the, the ties are there. K-State has really had success at Blue Valley. Uh, Richmond would actually be the, the fourth recruiting cycle in a row that K-State has gotten somebody from Blue Valley. So they're kind of keeping that pipeline going a little bit. And you kind of get the feeling that K-State is definitely in the lead. And you kind of get the vibe a little bit from people that you talk to that it might be sooner rather than later for K-State that he makes the call, which would be a good thing because his recruitment is really starting to blow up a little bit. And I would expect him to go through the spring and if he wanted to go through the summer, I feel like that he could be an eight to 10 power four offers kind of guy. So probably the sooner that it wraps up for K-State, the better. But he's definitely somebody that you need to know. I wrote a, a recruiting update on him earlier this week where he kind of talks about his offer and what it meant, what it meant to him to be from Kansas and to get the K-State offer. Because again, K-State first won of the power four to offer a Kansas kid. And that they make that a point to do that. And they did it again with McGuire Richmond and that they always want to beat at least KU, if not everybody else for a local kid to offer first. Well, and we'll see how it goes for him, but obviously K state has uh, had a lot of success over really the last two, three cycles now of being able to infiltrate and kind of take over the state. And uh, they seem to be, on their way to making strides in the class of 2025, as we've already talked about a couple of Kansas guys here. So any other names that we haven't mentioned that uh, people should be aware of and and up to date on what's going on with their recruitment? Uh, The other thing, the one player that I think that I'd really point out, and it's it's another big name, but this is the the weekend where Broderick Scholl from uh, Bixby, Oklahoma will be on campus at K-State, a four-star offensive lineman in the on-three industry ranking. And, and that, that's another big one because it's it, it's you look down and it's another four-star, another guy that has a chance to be a four-star coming to K-State uh, for a visit. And K-State is right there with the Broderick Scholl as well. So I'm interested to see how 
to hear how his visit goes. And I mean, uh, there have been people that have talked that K-State's probably in the top two for him. So that, that's one to really keep an eye out for. It seems like a pretty significant update there. If, if there's, you know, the legit like outside noise to it as well, that, hey, K-State's a, a real contender. Because I think that's one, even when we talked a couple of weeks ago, you think to yourself, okay, it's great. It seems like K-State's going to put themselves in the middle of this. But how how close are they going to be when, you know, the finish line approaches? And it seems like they're keep, keeping themselves to the front of the pack. And that's obviously a good thing. And we'll see how things continue, uh, especially after uh, another big visit this weekend. So with everything kind of lining up the way that it is, if if we had to say, okay, because the class still sits with just one commit in 2025, if you're looking and you're saying by the time 4th of July passes, because I mean, we, we know 4th of July is turning kind of a big commitment date for some people. Once we get past the 4th of July and it's July 5th, how many commitments do you think K-State has in the class of 2025? I know it's a tough thing to do, so you can ballpark it a little bit, but I know that people are probably interested on, hey, when's this thing going to start to fill up? In a ballpark, I'd say probably like o over 10 is what I'd say because I, I imagine that they'll want most of the class wrapped up by the 4th of July. So over 10 seems like a good number because the other thing that, makes this an even more impossible exercise is how variant and class sizes that you can have. But I, I would say over 10 is where I'd feel the most comfortable. Okay. All right. That, that <laughs> sounds good. I, people probably like hearing that too, to know that, Hey, don't worry. Drew Galloway says by 4th of July, there is going to be double digits in this class. So uh, this is not going to be, you know, dilly dallying and you're not going to be wondering, is anybody ever going to want to come to school at K-State? Uh, Drew doesn't seem to have that worry right now. No, I, I most of the class is typically filled up by the 4th of July. Even this past class, I think that they only added like five or six uh, Juco slash high school guys after the 4th of July. So most of the class will be filled up. Okay, so what you're saying then is, is that I should probably ask you more so uh, how many commits does K-State have by the middle of June? See that then that's where it's even tougher because it's that that's where it's just a real shot in the dark of oh this number sounds good. I just it just <laughs> seems uh seems like maybe you were you were wanting a little bit uh a little bit tougher question there. So we'll we'll see how it plays out. We'll, we'll be able to get probably a better feel week by week as we go through this off season and kind of see where K State's heading, but certainly making good strides. And I, I mean it, it we're a, we're years removed from it now. But it just feels a lot better to be in this position for K-State uh, than, you know, what it was in the Snyder regime. So uh, yeah. the, these these guys are working and the opportunity is there for them to continue making splashes. And I think we're really seeing during this this stretch here is that their recruiting efforts and the way they've been able to scout guys has paid off in one Big 12 championship. And so. They were able to utilize what they've done developmentally for players and then success on the field. And they are incrementally kind of raising the bar for what recruiting looks like at K-State. And when you're in a position like K-State in a state that doesn't always have uh, the most resources for you to get, and it's tough to make your pitches to the top dogs out there, you have to make it kind of a slow and steady rise. And I think yeah. K-State is doing that. The, the other thing that I'll add with that is that I think that you're seeing uh, the K-State coaching staff kind of being more comfortable in their own skin and just knowing about K-State. And that's the, the good thing about not having a lot of coach turnover is that for the most part, all the coaches have been here since the beginning and yeah. since Chris Kleiman got to K-State. So you're kind of seeing all of that really come together and how they want to attack the recruiting trail and the guys that they want to go after. And, and you have to think that, I mean, it, it's a slow process in the sense that a lot of these kids, they've been recruiting for almost over a year already and for the 2025 class, and they don't sign until December. So it's, it's a slow rise in that sense because recruiting is just so sped up now. Yeah, it, we'll, we'll see how it goes and uh, where things end up. But K-State certainly 
continues to make their strides. And that uh, provides good weekly updates for everybody to check back in here at K-State Online on the YouTube. But if you want even more in-depth news and action when it comes to K-State football recruiting, head over to kstateonline.com and you can get all the scoops and inside info that you want from Drew and D.Y., as they've got you covered there and kind of keep you in the know with everything going on with K-State football and certainly uh, basketball transfer portal time. is it's, it's only the end of March, so things are about to get crazier when guys actually start picking where they want to go. Uh, but that time will be coming sooner, and uh, it's going to be kind of fun to, to enjoy that. College basketball, I think with the transfer portal now, has probably the most fun offseason between that and, and football. Probably because guys in basketball can make a much more immediate impact. You get one dude and he can make a difference. Whereas football, it's like, yeah, okay, you got this guy, but you're also missing like an entire core of linebackers. And uh, you've got, you know, five, seven slow corners that aren't going to do anything in this league. So yeah. Ba- basketball is crazy to me because like you can flip the whole roster. I mean, we saw that with yeah, but, in year one, like you, you can kind of saw it in two straight years. <laughs> yeah. So like, you see that, and that makes basketball, the transfer portal, so interesting to me. Is like we're seeing a bunch of teams just like lose like eight to ten guys, and it's like, oh god, they gotta go and just get everybody. Maybe, maybe Deion Sanders would be a better college basketball coach than a college football coach. Then <laughs> you, you might be onto something there. Yeah, that might be some. I, I know Tad Boyle has you know things going okay for Colorado right now, but just something to consider moving forward. So. We'll see how things look uh, when we talk again next week about K-State football recruiting, but stay tuned to K-State Online for the latest. So head over to On3, get it checked out, and uh, be back here tomorrow on Thursday. D.Y. and I are going to talk a little bit about the current running back situation at K-State because, as Drew just said, K-State's looking to load up on running backs in this class, but what is on the roster currently, you got one guy that is clear-cut number one, and then everybody else behind that, some serious questions, and you wonder about what K-State's plan might be there this year. So, D.Y. and I will talk about that on Thursday, ahead of opening day, where I'll be at Kauffman <laughs> watching you know, the Royals get the, the AL Central campaign underway, and uh, we'll see how everything works out there. So, for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online, and we'll be back again next week with another recruiting update for you.